Hello, welcome back everyone. Liquor Hound here with you. Thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. And today we're going to be taking a look and finding out if my top five under $20 vodkas and my top five mid-range price vodkas can compete with one of the world's greatest vodkas, the Kaufman Private Collection Luxury Vodka coming out of Russia. Now this vodka, it's phenomenal, okay? It is well-renowned and regarded as being one of the best vodkas ever made. Unfortunately, it is not done all the time, so it is very, very rare. Uh, this one I purchased in 2010 when it came out, and I haven't seen it released since. So, unless the yields are perfect, they're not going to bottle it. Now, they do the regular Kaufman, the soft and so on, um, but they're not quite this. All right. Now, retail pricing on the Kaufman Private Collection bottle is about $200. Uh, it does come in a nice presentation box that kind of cracks in half and presents the bottle right in the center. That's all well and good. Uh, but the question I have today is, how do these, some of my other favorites, compete with it? Are they really that far behind? Is it really worth waiting and seeking one of these out? Or are we doing just fine with the low, lesser expensive bottles? And that's what we're going to do today. So let's meet the players. Uh, first, we have Reka Vodka over here. Uh, Reka is coming out of Iceland. It's distilled from grain. Uh, retail pricing on it is going to be about $16. Then we have one called the Exclusive One coming out of Moldova. This is distilled from grain. Retail pricing about $10, $12. Next, we have Sobieski. Sobieski is coming out of Poland. Retail pricing on it is about $10 to $12 distilled from grain. Then we have Old Faithful, Stolichnaya. <laughs> coming out of Russia, distilled from grain, uh, retail pricing on it, it's about $16, $17. Tito's Vodka, coming kind of out of Austin, I say kind of because I think they're sourcing their vodka from Indiana and then bottling in Austin, but anyway, regardless, everybody knows about Tito's. Uh, retail pricing on Tito's is about $17. Then we have on the mid-range pricing, this is above 20, uh, Grey Goose, this is going to be the lowest in on this scale too, uh, Grey Goose coming out of France, distilled from French wheat, retail pricing on Grey Goose is about $27, somewhere right there. Then we have Beluga, gold, this is actually the, sorry, Beluga Transatlantic, almost at the gold line. The gold line is phenomenal, but that's a $100 vodka. This is just the Transatlantic Racing Edition, retail pricing at $30, coming out of Russia, distilled from grain. If you can't find this one, don't worry about it. Just get the regular standard Beluga Noble uh, Vodka. It's right here with, as far as quality is concerned. I think it's like $5 less. All right, then we have the Belvedere Intense Diamond Rye. This is the 80 proof version. They do a 100 proof version as well, but that's not as good of a sipper. Uh, this is rye coming out of Poland as well. Retail pricing on it is about $40. Then we have the Chase Vodka coming out of England using English potatoes. Um, retail pricing on it is about $40. Finally, we have Imperia, sorry, Imperia Russian Vodka. Uh, this one is using grain as the distillate. Retail pricing on it is about $35. Now, now that we have the players introduced, the one thing i got to say is there are two bottles in here that I probably would replace with others if uh, I was given like my total pick because Tito's would not be here and neither would Grey Goose. But I know that these are huge vodkas and they're, they're big brands for a reason. There's a lot of people that drink these vodkas so I have to include them otherwise I'm just going to hear about it endlessly in the comments and we don't need that. I'll just put them in here. We'll see how they compare. But then you're going to get the other half of that crowd. It's going to be like, you should have just put what you wanted. Okay, well, I'm going to do that too. Because I would have replaced Tito's with Monopoloa. And this is a big old handle of it. But Monopoloa is coming out of Austria. Retail pricing for a $7.50. I believe is around $10, $12. So it's kind of in this price range here. Um, distilled from potatoes. So kind of like Chase. I think Chase and Monopoloa are going to be the only two potato vodkas. Everybody else is going to be distilled from grain. On the other side, Grey Goose, I would probably replace it with the white gold black edition vodka coming out of Russia. This is grain distillate again. Retail pricing on it is going to be about $30, $35. And I have a pour of each and every one of these, so we're going to go through, nose them, taste them, and see what we decide as far as do they really compare. Now, before I get going on the nosing and tasting, let me say that you know, these are vodkas. They're not going to have a ton of complexity. They're not going to be a lot of crazy notes in them because they don't get any oak maturation. And oak, the wood, is what gives whiskeys and so on a lot of flavors. Um, 
So we're not going to get a lot of that, so don't expect a lot. But that said, let's go ahead and start with the top. Kaufman Private Collection Luxury Vodka. Oh, you know what? I haven't even poured it yet. Boom. Now we poured it. Now you can see how the cap works. It's got one of those little where you can't refill it type situations going on underneath there. And then it's just like a little nice little plastic cap. It looks like chrome, but it's just plastic. All right, let's start with it. Ooh, nice. I can sit there and take a big inhalation of it in the glass. And I don't even have to part my lips because there's not enough of the harsh components that a lot of vodkas will give you rubbing alcohol, that type of thing that'll burn your nose or make your eyes water. It's not enough in here. Um, it's very, very clean distillate. Um, the one thing I will say is that a lot of vodkas, including this Stolich and I right here, it actually says on the bottle, chill before drinking. They recommend that because what happens with chilling is it kind of mutes some of the negative characteristics that you'll find, especially in a lot of other vodkas, uh, of the rubbing alcohol tone. If when you chill it, it's going to make it feel a little more viscous. It's going to actually gain viscosity in the bottles, depending on how cold you're serving it. Uh, but it'll make it feel a lot cleaner. That rubbing alcohol tone that you might find at room temp will probably go away. And But that's not what we're doing here. I like tasting at room temp because I'm looking for that flaw. All right, Because if it's not there here, when you chill it, it's going to be even better. All right, So let's start with the coffin. I will say I get a little bit of that vanilla cream that you're going to find a lot in these, that malt characteristic. This one has a unique citrus tone to the nose as well. And a lot of grain. A lot of grain in here. I can smell that grain really nice. All right. Let's taste it. Boom. Wow. Good, rich viscosity. High, uh, I'd say medium high viscosity, creamy palate. It enters, you get that malty vanilla tone coming right away. A little bit of that citrus was picking up on the nose is actually a little lemon twist. And as I'm talking, the flavor is still developing. I'm starting to pick up on the mid palate. You start picking up a little bit of a a little bit of a pepper vibe, but it's not black pepper. I even kind of. I think white pepper might be too big on it. I'm almost thinking almost like a pink peppercorn for this one on the palate. And then that creamy, sweet, malty, vanilla entry with that little lemon twist. Then you get that pink peppercorn kind of cracked on top just a little bit. And then, and this is a crazy thing, and then you start noticing the grain coming up after the mid palate. And I'm starting to pick up a little warmth in the chest here. But the grain starts coming through on the finish. And you can still pick up all the sweetness, all the malt, vanilla, everything else is still in there. And it's just, the finish is just rolling. That's a beautiful vodka. That's why that is, in my opinion, the best vodka in the world. All right. Had to cut it off with water. Hate to do that. But coming over here, let's start with the $16 Reka, which... By the way, was my runner-up vodka of the year in my 2019 Best of Spirits video that I just released in December. I'll probably put a link in the description or up top somewhere. But let's check it out. This one, no rubbing alcohol. That's a good thing. Well, maybe, oh, there's a little twinge. There's a little twinge. But this one definitely is aromatically more heavy than here. And what I mean by that is there's more of the grain coming through right up front. A little less of that sweetness and that vanilla malt. More focused on grain. Let's taste it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that comes through on the palate. It is creamy. Good medium viscosity. Good mouthfeel. This is a small batch product, so there could be batches that aren't as good as others. I've run into that in other batch products because they're claiming small batch on the bottle. But I will say this batch in particular, very, very solid. Good mouthfeel, richness of the grain right up front. Again, again, medium viscosity, fairly creamy. Just a little bit of little pinch of cinnamon in there, adding a little warmth. Not a whole lot to it. 
clean, simple, good flavor. The only thing that I would say about that one is just how the, the grain kind of showed up really early. So it felt a little more uh, heavy handed, I will say there. All right. Now we're going to check exclusive one coming out of Moldova. Ten, twelve dollars. Yeah. This is actually, I think this was a vodka of the year. I think going back 2018, 2017, somewhere in there, I think I threw that in there. And for good reason. At this price point, super clean. Good nose of what I expect a vodka to be. A good standard vodka is going to be that sweet, malt, creamy thing going on. No rubbing alcohol. I don't want any of that. Boom, that one delivers. Yeah, good medium, just above medium viscosity. It is creamy, malty, that vanilla right up front. Not too much spice at all here. This one actually just feels sweet, creamy, and then it kind of just starts tapering. I'm chewing on it, trying to search for the grain. There's a little bit of grain in there, but it's mostly on the finish, and it's not really super pronounced. It's, it's in there, but it's kind of muted. So if you want that just sweet, clean vodka, that's a good way to go with good viscosity, good mouthfeel. Oh, nothing wrong with that. All right. Sobieski, another same price point, $10, $12. Coming out of Poland. little less viscosity than this one but still medium viscosity creamy malty more of that than this one more pepper than this one and I'm picking up a little bit of white pepper there not much else there's a little bit of a rubbing alcohol element to it and when I take in you'll hear me and I'm sucking air into my mouth and then slowly breathing it out through my nose and that's where I'm picking up that little rubbing alcohol tone in there. It's in there, but very, very minute. And this is room temp. So, and, and it's not even enough to where if I had to drink this room temp, I'd be put off by it. No, it's nothing near that bad. Great, great buy at $10, $12. Next up, Stolichnaya coming out of Russia. Let's see. Breaking the rules since it's not chilled, but we'll see. You can definitely pick up the grain and a little more pepper spice here. But you do pick up grain and malt. Really nice. Okay. Good viscosity. That's a... Yeah. When you look in the dictionary and it says vodka, I don't have a problem with putting that picture on there. That is... It's a little more punchy than here on the spice uh, because you get this really good medium, medium high viscosity there, uh, richness of the malt, the vanilla, creaminess. And then you don't pick up anything else other than a little bit of the grain coming in mid palate and a white pepper, a good crack. And it's a good, decent amount of white pepper in there, adding a little bit of a prickly, prickly warmth going into the finish. Again, you can still chew on the malt. The vanilla is still in there. Yeah, really, really great vodka. That's, you know, if you may be a little put off on that one just because of the amount of spice. That one has more spice than anybody else, but good flavor nonetheless. All right. Oh, price point, $16 on that one, by the way, once again. All right, Tito's, another one about $16, $17. Let's see what we got here. A little more of the, I could pick up a little more of the ferment, a little more of that yeastiness going on on the nose there when I took that deep inhalation. But it is fairly clean, malty, vanilla, not much more going on. But it was a little bit of a, almost a little hint of sourness in there. Almost like a sourdough. Okay, let's go with sourdough bread. Okay. Here is the taste. 
medium viscosity. I noticed a little difference right up front was a little bit almost like a little salty, almost like that salt you would put in the bread, in the dough. And that's kind of comes through a little bit on the flavor. A little, little hint of more salt than anybody else that was right up front. You get a little bit of the honey, malt, I mean, sorry, not honey, a little bit of the malt and vanilla character that these were giving you, but it's a little less. And the grain comes through mid palate. Less, this one's more in the line of, I would say, here and here. If you kind of took the better qualities of that, you would get that in there. Yeah. Yeah, good grain flavor, malt, vanilla. And then there's a little rubbing alcohol. That's the only negative that I find there. And it's kind of after the mid palate. And if you take it in, breathe out slowly, it's a little rubbing alcohol. It's not a, not a horrible. I can see why it's, you know a lot of people drink it, especially if you're drinking that chill during a cocktail. You're never going to notice that. But here, I would definitely go with any of those. All right, now we're going to taste Monopoloa coming out of Austria. Potato vodka, $10, $12. Let's see what that's got going on. That one's a little bready as well, so... It's almost, the, I guess it's the yeast that we have going on. Very clean, creamy on the palate. It is malt, a little less vanilla than the others, but there's a little bit in there. But this one's a little more doughy, a little more yeasty, bready. And a little twinge of the rubbing alcohol in the back end. And the spice is there. There's a little bit of a cracked white pepper in that one as well. So that one's to me is more along the line of this one. It's a little more heavy with a little bit of this element going on with it because it's a little doughy. You get a little bit of that rubbing alcohol on the very, very back end. But, again, this is room temp. This is $10, $12 vodka. It's not enough to, you know, throw it out. It's really, really solid. Now we're going with Grey Goose here. Let's see. Let me double. Let me double rinse some of this one. All right. Here's the hype. Let's find out. No, it's been around forever. Come on. It's been around forever for a reason. All right. There's a little more spice on the nose than, than I was picking up over here. It's kind of reminiscent of the spice that I was picking up on Stolich Naya. The cinnamon. This one's a little more cinnamon than pepper. You do get a little bit of that malty vanilla. Let's taste it. Mm. All right. Good viscosity, medium viscosity. Feels very creamy on the palate initially. There is a little bit of a unique tone in it in that I was picking up almost a little, not quite floralness. I'm going to call it more of like a tea vibe going on. But it is very creamy. Vanilla. Yeah, and then you get a little bit of that tea essence going. That's the unique quality there. A little bit of cinnamon prickling up, adding a little spice there. And then on the back end, on the back end, there's a little rubbing alcohol. That's the only negative to that one. It's not a bad vodka. Of course it's not. It's been around forever. But that little bit of rubbing alcohol I could do without. Okay. But it's not horrible. Not horrible. Okay. All right. Beluga. The Beluga Transatlantic. But again, this could be the regular standard uh, noble Beluga. $30 grain distillate coming out of Russia. Super clean. Creamy, malty, vanilla. <sighs> That's nice. Good viscosity, medium, just above medium viscosity. Rich, creamy mouthfeel. Malt, vanilla, 
very subtle this one feels very easy nice and rounded little white pepper but much less than probably anybody else just a little crack of it and then even when I'm searching for that rubbing alcohol I'm not really finding it in that one no it's just got that vanilla malt and grain character come in and the grain kind of just everybody just kind of arrives very very uh, softly with this one it's very subtle in the way it kind of transitions that's why when people ask me you know this oh by the way vodka of the year for 2019 again i put the link of that uh, my best of spirits uh, video is going to be in the description or right up here but yeah great great uh, vodka it's been, I think, my, I think that was my 2018 best of uh, vodka as well. It's for a reason. It's still great. All right. Now we're going to do Belvedere. The Intense Diamond Rye at 80 proof. Coming out of Poland. Distilled. Oh, that good rye. Okay. I like this one because I can definitely pick up that rye as far as it being a little more grain heavy and a little more spice characteristic in the glass. So it is, if you almost think about it like again, like that doughiness, that's that rye bread, that's in here. Okay. Good viscosity, medium, medium high, creamy, clean feeling. Ooh. Yeah, creamy, a little bit of the malt and vanilla, more of the rye spice, the grain coming through. That rye spice just adding a little bit of prickle right there at the mid palate, but more of the grain flavor coming through onto the finish. Wow, yeah, that's, for $40, that's a great, great vodka. Ooh. It's more flavor than the, even the beluga. The beluga is well-rounded, soft, balanced, more elegant than this one. This one's a little more, if you're a whiskey drinker, then this one might be a little more your profile. So for the Reka as well, because they're just a little more heavy-handed. But there's enough elegance. There's enough creaminess on the palate going on. And they don't get wild. Nobody, None of these get really crazy wild. But the flavor's lingering here. Oof. Really like that one. $40 for that one. I was just thinking, how far off is that from here? Because again, as great as this was, I mean, that's very, very enjoyable. All right. Chase, uh, English potato vodka. Coming out of England, let's find out. Definitely sweeter on the nose. The sweetest nose of them all, actually. You get that, there's a creamy vanilla tone, but it is sweeter than everyone. Mm. Yeah, it's almost, it's crazy. It's almost kind of a, is that on the nose? It's very subtle, but on the flavor, when it enters, it's medium high viscosity. It is fairly rich on the palate, but then you start picking up a little bit of the, and this, I don't know, it's going to sound weird, but a little bit of that earthiness is coming through on this one. With that rich, it's sweeter than everyone else, and then you get a little bit of an earthiness tone, soil tone underneath that. It's going to be that potato. It has to be that potato. And then you get that malt and vanilla right in the middle. Again, the spice isn't very big on that one. That one's more on the sweet, but that depth, that soil, that earthiness is actually a little bit more complexity to it that I really enjoy. Yeah, it's almost that's strange. Even on the nose, the nose is different than everyone. And you could almost, uh, I mean, it's a potato, but... It almost has like a little bit of a yamminess, sweet potato vibe on the nose. Then on the front of that palate, the front of the entry, the flavor there is almost like a, yeah, it's a sweeter, yammy, sweet potato type vibe. 
and then it kind of goes into the standard vodka territory. It doesn't... The potato isn't as noticeable. You know, a lot of these you're picking up the grain kind of coming through on the back end. This one, it's all happening up front. A lot of complexity up front. And then it just kind of all just kind of fades away. But I really enjoy it. All right. Imperia Vodka. Coming out of Russia. Grain distillate. Clean. Super clean here. Creamy, malty. That vanilla malt. Mm. Possibly the second sweetest one that we've had. Next to this one. Oh, and it grows and intensifies. So it enters medium viscosity, sweeter than everyone else. And then you start noticing that malt vanilla tone starts growing. Not very spicy. So we're not picking up too much pepper or cinnamon. And even on these, when I was picking up the cinnamon here, it was almost more like a baking cinnamon. More balanced and I'm not sharp. And on this one, here I am on the finish. I'm starting to pick up a little cracked white pepper. But up front, it was all about the creamy, soft, vanilla, malt tone. And then you started noticing a little grain kind of came in, and then you started picking up the spice on the very back end. Very, very solid vodka. All right, white gold vodka. That's this one over here, sorry. We're at this one, the black edition. 80 proof, coming out of Russia. Retail pricing about $30. Super clean, hardly pick up anything on that one. Medium viscosity. Slightly sweet. A little more spice intensity because you start getting that malt vanilla tone coming in, but then almost immediately you're hit with the sharpness of the pepper. And this one again, white pepper. I haven't picked up black pepper anywhere here, so it's not really heavy on the pepper. Lighter tone, white pepper. The only one that was kind of unique, I think it was this one, was giving me almost like even lighter than the white pepper. It was starting to get almost like the slightly, I'm not going to call it fruity, but you know how pink peppercorn's a little lighter to me than the, even the white. But... There's a little cinnamon. There's a little pepper, white pepper in this one. Good balance, though. It's kind of like this one with just a smidge more elegance to it. So overall, the one thing I'll say, and let me go back to the, the champ here. You know, there's not a... Let me... Uh, before I speak, one more time. Yes, that is the champ, and it is the best vodka here, but that said, it's not like, it's not way, you know, above what I'm finding in a lot of these. Matter of fact, I think if I was able to take some of the best qualities of, you know, a few of these and put them together, you would just about get this. But the problem with this one is just the, the way it develops on the palate. The way it enters the kind of subtle sweetness, not doesn't feel artificial or anything like that, but this really nice sweet malty vanilla, and then you get that little citrus lemon twist on it. You get a little bit of, you start to get to pick up a little bit of that spice with the pink peppercorns and a little, maybe just a little pinch of baking cinnamon. So you have everything that you would get in these all combined perfectly into that. But at $200, I think I'd rather have, at $200, I'd probably rather have multiples of some of these others. Because, you know, if you're going to mix a cocktail or somebody comes over and you need a cocktail, well, I'm not going to feel horrible if I have to make a cocktail out of this. Definitely not if I'm making it out of this. I will feel bad if I'm making it out of this. So, that said, you know, as great as some of the world's best vodkas are, they're an experience. And you're paying that money to experience that but you know it is in the end just a 
distillate of something grain a potato you know something like that fruits in the case of some others but are they really even at their very best light years ahead of everyone else no no i mean it is better and if you were here to taste them you would agree that is easily the best one it is balanced elegant all that but you wouldn't be disappointed if you were forced to sip you know the beluga or the Belvedere Intense, or even the Chase or Imperia, or the White Coat, you wouldn't be in you, none of these. You would be, you know, just, oh, it's trash. You know. So that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was a little long, but thank you for sticking with me. Of course, don't forget to check out my other videos. i got plenty here on YouTube. And if you're so inclined, join me over at Patreon.com, where I'm doing a video a week. I'm also doing giveaways now with certain tiers, so that's pretty cool. Check me out at Patreon.com slash LiquorHound. Of course, you can always find me on Facebook, um, Instagram, sometimes Twitter, at LiquorHound or The LiquorHound. But keep leaving all those great comments. I really appreciate it, and thank you for joining me once again. Everyone have a great evening, and cheers.